It's an interesting linear equations question. I'll classify this one as a 700 level GMAT problem solving question. It's a word problem. The challenge in any word problem is basically framing the equations right. The moment you've got the equations right, solving the equations more often than not will end up being a relatively easy task. Let's get started with this one. Susan invited 13 of her friends for her birthday party and created return gift hampers comprising one each of three, four and five dollar certificates. One of her friends did not turn up and Susan desired to rework her gift hampers such that each of the 12 who turned up got $13 worth of gift certificates. What they need to find out is how many gift hampers did not contain $5 gift certificates in the new configuration. Let's start with what she initially intended to do. She had 13 friends, so she invited 13 of them and she was planning to give one each of three, four and five dollar worth of certificate. So a gift hamper that she gave would have had a three, one, four and one, five, seven plus five, twelve dollars worth of gift certificates. She was planning to give to 13 of her friends. So 13 hampers, twelve dollars value per hamper. So one fifty six dollars worth of gift she was giving out for her birthday party return gift. Now One friend did not turn up. So 12 of them turned up. So she'll make 12 hampers. Now she's planning to put $13 worth of gift certificates into each one of them. So 12 into 13 is again the same, 156. So there's no dollar value change between what she initially intended to give totally and now. Initially, life was very simple. All she had to do was pick one $3, one $4, one $5 and put it into a hamper and she got $12. Now that's not going to work. She does not have $1. She cannot break it down. What she has bought cannot be returned. So she's going to work with three, four, five and get a combination of $13 from it. How is she planning to do it? Let's figure out what all possibilities exist. Let's start with $5 in a gift hamper. Five, another five, that makes it 10. If I put a third five, it's going to be 13. It's going to become 15. So I'll add a three to get a 13. So this is one format, one reconfigured version where she could hand out $13 worth of gift certificate using the three, four, five she has got. This does not contain a four. That's perfectly fine. Let's see if it's possible to create it with $4. A four, another four, that's eight. If I put in a third four, I'll get 12. I'll have to look for a $1 certificate that I don't have. Instead, let me go with a 5. 4, 4, 5 is a possibility. Let's look at if we can start it with a 3. 3, 6, 9. If we go for one more 3, I'll end up with a 12 and I'll have to look for a $1 certificate, which Susan does not have. So let's go with a 4 instead. So these are all the three variants, three possibilities of making $13 worth of gift hampers using 3, 4 and $5 gift certificates. Let's quickly run through this. So what are all the variants she can have? She can have this or this or this. In fact, she'll make variants of this and this and this. She'll have all these three variants with her. Now, what do we have to find out? She will have to find out how many of those gift hampers did not contain $5 certificate. Does it have a $5 certificate? Yes. Does it have? Yes. Does it have? No. So we'll have to count how many gift hampers of this configuration did Susan make. Let's assign variables to it. Let's say X of these, Y of these and Z of these is what she made. The answer to X is going to give us the answer to the question. How many gift certificates of each variant did she buy? She had 13 friends, so she had bought 13 of each, $3, $4 and $5. So number of $3 certificates that she had would be equal to 13. Let's count that in this format. In this format of gift hampers, there are three such certificates, three $3 certificates. How many such gift hampers are there? X of them are there. So in this variant, she will be able to pick three X $3 certificates. Does this variant have a $3 certificate? No. Does this have? Yes. How many does she have here? She has one $3 certificate in this. How many such hamper does she have? Each hamper has got one. She's got Z hampers. So three X plus Z will be the number of $3 certificates that she has got. Three in each of these hampers, X such hampers, so three X. One in each of these hampers, Z such hampers, so Z. So three X plus Z should give us the total number of $3 certificates. Pause the video here. Create equations for $4 and $5 and then play the video and check whether your equations are right. Once you got the equations, then there are multiple ways of solving and getting to the answer. Did you figure out what the equations for $4 and $5 are? Let's quickly run through it. $4 certificate, this variant in this hamper format, she's got one in each hamper. How many such hampers does she have? X. So $4, one of those X such hampers, X. In this case, how many? She's got two of these $4 certificates. How many such hampers? Each hamper has got two Y hampers. So it's X plus two Y is equal to 13. Let's run through the $5 variant. $5 variant, we have none here. We have one in each of these hampers. One per hamper, Y such hampers. So it's equal to Y. Two per hamper, Z such hampers. So Y plus two Z is equal to 13. So it's the equation one, equation two, and equation three for us. So counted the $3 certificates in each of these hampers and found out how many of them are there. There are 13. 
same for 4, same for 5. We need to find the value of x. This equation, we have x plus 2y, y plus 2z. If we basically rework these two equations, add, subtract them to eliminate y, we'll be left with an equation in x and z. This equation has got x and z. We can solve the resultant variant with 1 and get the answer. Let's get around to doing that. Let's equate the coefficient of y between these two equations. The coefficient of y here is 2. So let's multiply this equation with a 2. And what we'll end up with is 3 equation 3 into 2 will be equal to 2y plus 4z is equal to 26. I'm going to subtract equation 2 from this. Which is subtracting it will leave us with x plus 2y is equal to a 13. I'm going to subtract this also, right? It's an ends here. So 2y gets cancelled with 2y. 4z minus x is equal to 26 minus 13, which is equal to 13. I'm going to name this equation as 4. Equation 4 has got x and z. Equation 1 has got x and z. We want x, so let's eliminate z. The coefficient of z here is 1. Coefficient of z here is 4. So let's multiply equation 1 with a 4. If I do that, I'll get 12x plus 4z is equal to 4 into 13, which is equal to 52. Equation 4 is 4z minus x is equal to 13. Let's subtract equation 4 from 1 into equation 4. Uh, sorry, 4 times equation 1. 4z gets cancelled with 4z. 12x minus of minus x is equal to 13x. 52 minus 13 is equal to 39. 13x equals 39. x is equal to 3. What is x? x is the number of gift certificates that do not contain x. So answer choice. Answer is x equals 3 or the number of gift tampers that do not contain a $5 certificate are 3 in number. Quickly summarize it in a printed form. These are the equations. We have just run through it in a printed form here. Right from this point forward, it's basically solving a set of 3 linear equations. Step 1, we'll try and eliminate y. So it will get an equation in z and x. What are we going to solve? We're going to be solving equation 3 and equation 2 to get that. So by doing this process, we have arrived at an equation. We'll call it as equation 4. It's an equation in z and x. Equation 1 is also an equation in z and x. We'll solve those two equations, equation 4 and equation 1, and eliminate the variable z to find the value of x. x is equal to 3. What is x? x is the number of $5 gift certificate, number of gift tampers that do not contain $5 in them. That's the answer we are looking for. Choice D is the correct answer to the question. Before you leave, two things. Sign up as a trial user at wzkwo.in slash core. It's one of the most comprehensive online GMAT course. Get started with a free topic, statistics and averages. Build momentum to your GMAT preparation. Subsequently, pay up and unlock the remaining topics. Lastly, subscribe to the channel youtube.com slash bizaco and spread the word among your friends who are preparing for GMAT. You may also choose to join this channel as a member for a small monthly fee and enjoy member-only perks that come with it and will help you boost your GMAT preparation.